drops into the Czech Republic to explore an 800-year-old Gothic compound. What the hell was that? It sounded like it was coming in there. The bones of a Catholic saint rattle the nerves of Joe and Brandy. I've never seen anything like this before. No. But if Dustin and Brandy found its heavenly glow... Okay, it's something on thermal here. Go back in that, Joe. What? I, I don't know what that is. Then the team crosses rough water to find a ghost in Northern Ireland. The poltergeist activity just got too much to handle. Barry's attempt at bribery gets a shocking result. There, there he goes. Have the landlords of the manor house come to collect from GHI? They sound like a lake of breath. Republic, as well as a team member who has a birthday. Happy birthday, Brandy. Thank you. Happy birthday, Brandy. What age are you turning to now? Thanks, Barry. I am 25 years old now. Well, I would assume that this being your birthday, you were going to make sure that we had a big case for this one. Absolutely. OK, we're headed to Chesky Krumlov Castle. And uh, the area is made up of about 40 different buildings and palaces. And uh, some of the buildings within the complex were constructed as early as the 13th century. Now, the claims of activity range from a suicidal actress who may still be repeating her final performance, a baroness who supposedly still appears whenever there's a party. There are claims recently of activity going on by security guards that have been hearing and seeing a full-bodied apparition. All right, well, this is it coming up. This entire thing in front of us is all part of it. So uh, let's get inside and see what we got. Hello. Hello. I'm Bro. Anna. Nice Welcome to, to Chesky Krumov. Hi. And this is Mr. Slavko, director of the Hello, castle. Pánové, zdravím vás. Dobrý den. Dobrý den, den. zdravím vás. Kolegyně Hanna vás provede zajímavým veliké překvapení. So, me, Hanna, is going to show you interesting spots at the castle. Terrific. Shall we head in? There are a lot of legends told about different ghosts appearing at the castle complex. So we decided to bring GHI here to find out whether there is some paranormal activity present. And uh, where, which locations? Let me tell you first, uh, Castle Chesky Krumlov is one of the largest complexes in Europe, which contains five courtyards and about 43 buildings. Total size is uh, 15 acres. First, information about the castle comes back to 11th century. In the 18th century, the castle became a property of Schwarzenbergs until World War II, when the Nazis occupied the castle here. OK, so we are now at the Castle Theatre. It's the oldest still functioning theatre in Europe. In the 17th century, the beautiful actress Evelina fell in love with an actor. Unfortunately, the actor didn't love her the same way. So at the end of the play, she pulled the dagger and stabbed herself. She died on the stage. When cleaners were cleaning here, they heard some voices. Now, these voices that people are reporting, are we talking about male, female? Well, I believe they were female voices. All right, shall we head on? Yep. We'll follow you. OK, so now we are in the depository of Chesky Krumlov. Here you can see it is skeleton of a woman, which is dressed in a beautiful Baroque clothes from the 9th century. There is a lot of mysteries connected to the skeleton. We just assume that it could have been Saint Reparata, because most significant remains were presented to Castle Krumlov by Pope himself. If she was possibly a saint, why, I mean, how would she wind up in this kind of state? Why wouldn't she be buried? Well, this is uh, the unexplained mysteries. We have no further information. There will be a lot of anthropological researches carried out in upcoming years, which will uh, hopefully clarify the mysteries. 
Okay, this is called Summer House Bellaria and it was built in 1690 and it was built basically just to host beautiful parties. Oh, okay. Let me show you inside. It is said that Baroness Maknevenova, she was just a very beautiful lady who used to stay at the castle. There was a party and she complained of a headache. So someone recommended her to drink a glass of uh, strong red wine and right after she did, she fell to the ground and died. It is believed that the lady is actually on the painting uh, over there in front of you because she used to wear a red dress. Also, a lady has been appearing here whenever there is a big party. All right, shall we head on? Okay, so this is the entrance to the castle tower and dates back to the 13th century. One day I was crossing the castle courtyard at the entrance to the old tower and I heard some footsteps behind me. Some force was stopping me from turning around. When the footsteps got close, it felt like somebody was breathing down my back and then hugged me. When it released me, I could finally turn around and I saw a dark shape that suddenly disappeared. So take a look, uh, there is a castle dungeon. All the prisoners used to be just thrown down, so they break their legs and then the hall was covered, so they died. At the end of 16th century, one of the alchemists practicing here goes down in the dungeon and he died of unexplained reasons. Supposedly he has been seen around this area, around the dungeon, and also walking up the stairs towards the top of the tower. Okay, here we are at the top of the tower, so with this beautiful view of the entire city. I have the last story to share with you, which is story of White Lady is a ghost of this castle, which has been appearing basically everywhere. Thank you so much for taking us around. Gonna go get the rest of the team, get unpacked, get set up and get to work. Okay, thank you so much. I look right. forward to it. Brandy has set us up with an incredible case for tonight. Uh, it's definitely the biggest location we've ever done. The team's ready. Um, we're getting the equipment set up now. Just go straight up. But we're going to see what's really going on here. Barry, you want to walk us through yeah. the cameras? Camera number one is in the summer house. It's the Lulux camera. We're trying to capture this person in red, so it's going to capture the, the color much better than the others. Full spectrum in number two, the same area, but we want to see if there's anything going to show up in either camera. Camera number three is covering the kitchen area. Camera number four is up on the third floor, and it's covering the entire length of the third floor. Everyone's got a walkie. We want to hit every location, but we want to make sure we're thorough at the same time. All right, let's get to work. The story behind the theater is that this actress was in love with the lead actor, David, but he didn't love her. So during a live performance, she grabs a dagger from his belt, stabs herself with it, dies right there. Mm -hmm. And the workmen in the theater still hear a woman's voice, even when the theater's empty. Wow. Robin Ashley in the theater. I'm going to go set up audio recorder on the stage. While I'm setting this up, go take the balcony right up there. Mm -hmm. And you can run the analog when you get up there. Okay. What I'm hoping to capture in this theater is a EVP, electronic voice phenomenon, which is where you ask questions of a possible spirit, and when you go back and listen to the recording, you actually pick up an answer to your question or some kind of vocalized response. You recording? Yeah. All right. Ashley and myself want to give you a chance for you to perform again. Tonight could really be the start of a brilliant comeback for you. Ashley, did you hear that? Sound almost like a creak. Yeah. Sound like it was coming from center stage. Stage is empty. What if I was this David? Could you demonstrate what you would do to me if I were David? Did you hear that? That sounded like a female, single syllable, no. But it definitely sounded like a woman. Bob. Mm hmm? I'm hearing shuffling up here. It sounded like it was behind me. Bob, I'm hearing shuffling up here. 
It sounded like it was behind me. When Rob and I were investigating in the theater, I was in the balcony, I was hearing creaking noises and shuffling. Go ahead, you can go right up to Ashley if you want. Is there someone up here with me? Can you, uh, can you come closer? If you don't want to come too close, can you tap on something? I didn't see anything further, hear anything further after that, but hopefully our, um, our digital voice recorder can pick something up. EVP session, end. Audio session, uh, Joe and Brandy in the, the closet with the, with the saint. With the saint. We call upon any spirits that still remain here. We ask for you to share your knowledge with us. Please help us understand who you this were. individual laying in front of us is. We're sorry that you're in this room, discarded like an old piece of furniture. Um, we would like to know who you are. So if you're able to come forward and tell us who you are, could you please do so? We come here with the utmost respect for you and anyone else that may linger here. We would like to be able to share your name with the individuals that keep you here so that they can properly lay you at rest. This person is nameless, hidden away in a small closet with broken furniture, and it's just incredibly odd to me that a possible saint would be treated like this. Well, I would like to Thank you for your time, and I hope that you did speak to us. We'll leave you now. This is Joe and Rob in what remains of the old castle, possibly looking for the alchemist. When I was a little kid, this is what we did. We walked through abandoned houses that everyone said was haunted with my mom, the whole nine, and it was fun. Watch your step. I thought I heard a voice. I thought it was a woman's voice. At one point, I thought I uh, heard a voice, and I looked at Rob, and he heard it as well. Hello? Is there anybody here? Trying to frighten us back out? Did you hear something again? Yep. Is the alchemist around? We need to speak to him. Probably feel pretty safe around here. No one comes in and bothers you. You heard that, right? Mm hmm. It sounded like it was coming in there. Okay, yeah. This is it. So if we heard voices from down here, they didn't get away. On three occasions since we came into this area, we heard disembodied voices. There is no one in here. We've looked top to bottom. If you want us to go, demonstrate to us that you don't want us in this part of the castle. Have you given up communicating with us? I think that if there was anything in this old part of the castle, it's definitely quieted down now. So it'll be interesting to see, with all these disembodied voices, if we were picking up EVPs as well. All right. All right, you want to 
when I start doing uh, some EVP, yeah. you know, I'll do a little thermal look around here. Dustin and I headed down to the wine cellar where there's been a couple different reports of uh, two different apparitions down here. Among the pieces of equipment, the mini TV, the EMF, the audio, we were running thermal. Uh, we thought it was important because if there was any strange variance in temperature uh, that couldn't be accounted for, we were going to capture it with the thermal. How long have you been down here? Who was it that put you down here? If there's anyone in here with us tonight, come forward. Can you show yourself to us? Okay, it's something on thermal here. What the hell is that? Mission. How long have you been down here? Brittany and I were investigating down in the wine cellar. Uh, there's uh, reports of apparitions uh, down here. Can you show yourself to us? Okay, it's something on thermal here. What the hell is that? It does look just like a person. There was a point where uh, it looked as if there was a weird uh, residual heat signature. You know what? I think it's the lights. Because look at the first Can't one. Can see this is one okay? Be... Uh, yeah, there yeah. we go. Look at the first one there. It's a lot yeah. larger. And then the second one is smaller. Yeah. That is the archway. So we've got the perfect nice. head and body. Sweet. The way the lights were situated with the uh, the length of the hallway made it look like a head and shoulder shape. Uh, so it was really cool to look at, and it was a good thing to be able to figure out. All right, let's keep moving. Yeah, after you. Fantastic. Robert asked Brandy and I to uh, come over and uh, continue investigating the tower. He and Joe Chin had had some uh, early success here. Dustin and Brandy in the tower. We had friends in here earlier, and. You're trying to tell them something. What was it that you were trying to convey to them? We're attempting to communicate with anyone that still may be here for whatever reason. Do you understand what it is that we're trying to do? Who was that? Sound of vocal. Yeah. We're high up enough where we're not getting any other sound. There was some type of voice. Um, really was short, wasn't able to discern what it was saying. Uh, but hopefully that came out on the recorder. Right. If that was you trying to communicate, can you try to say something more? Are you angry that we're here? Would you like for us to leave you alone? I think we should probably head up. All right. Dustin, Randy. Yeah, hey, Barry, we got you. Joe and I are up on the third floor. We're still hearing noises down and below. Um, can you come up and investigate as well? We're going to need uh, twice as much people here. OK, 10-4, four, brother. We're on our way. OK. <laughs> Back up the hill, Greeny. We wound up with the perfect opportunity to have this party for Brandy. The location we're at, uh, one of the buildings actually has a story that a spirit actually comes forward in a red dress every time a party is thrown. Thank you, guys. You're very welcome. If there's anyone else here with us, you're welcome to join us at any time. I'm glad she had a great time. I want to make sure that we go very thoroughly through the DVR footage and see if possibly we had another guest that we didn't see. What really stood out to me was when Joe and I went to the old part of the castle. Three disembodied voices. We tracked it down. There was no one there. So I'm going to ask everyone else to be real careful when they're going through that audio, because I heard it, Joe heard it, and now I want our client to hear it.
Chesky Cromwell was a huge expanse of a castle and needed to disperse our equipment over a wide area. The mini DVs, the thermal, everything was being run to its top capabilities. I look forward to going through this. I know it's going to be a mountain of a task for us, but I hope we find something. Hey guys, I got something pretty interesting here. Uh, this is whenever Rob and Dustin were down in the dungeon of the castle tower. And you can tell they set the voice recorder down and they leave it. Mm -hmm. And they walk away. And it sounds as if something comes and hits it or turns it off. I'm interested to hear this. Give me a seat. Oh. Oh, yeah. There seems to be a, there is a big noise there before mm -hmm. before it loses its power. Good yes. catch. Thanks. Whoa. Hey, guys. I think I caught something here. This is in the summer house. And this was while we were setting up for Brandy's surprise birthday party. And um, in that room that's just outside of it, down in the right corner here on the bottom, you'll see a flash of light. Okay. And then it just disappears. Ready? Mm -hmm. Right down here. Wow. Go back in that job and go to single frame rate. Okay. What is that? Wow. I, I don't know what that is. Nice to meet you again. Good to see you. So I wonder what is your result of your investigation? Uh, the location was beautiful. Uh, it was very challenging. This is one of the largest cases that we've done. We systematically sent multiple teams in to document whatever we could. In certain locations, like the wine cellar, fortunately, there was no sign of any apparitions or figures walking around down there. But uh, we do have some personal experiences. Some of the bigger things that happened was in the theater. Certainly, we had many different times where there was sounds of footsteps, movement, uh, boards creaking. And fortunately, we did not recover any evidence from inside the theater. Also, in the room with the skeletal remains uh, of the woman, uh, the saint, um, nothing came forward uh, from that. We had a team in there for a while. What about the, uh, the tower? Uh, actually, the tower is interesting. There were some things that happened there that we're going to talk to you about. The first thing we did when we went in to start the investigation, we have simple digital voice recorder. Okay. Dustin took it down to the bottom of the dungeon. We come back several hours later to retrieve it, and the batteries are dead. So they shouldn't have been dead? They shouldn't have sure. been dead. I know for a fact I put new batteries in it, but it only had about four minutes of recording time that was used. Yeah, which is very short. Well, here's something else. We have the recording that happened before the batteries died, and there was something down there in the dungeon. So I just want you to take a close listen to this. So it was something that was seen to be in that room near, the, very close to the recorder, except that there was no one down there. What do you think it is? At this point, certainly it would be a stretch for us to say it was something paranormal, but we don't know what created that sound next to the recorder before it shut off. We do, however, have some recordings that I think give a better idea of what we may have been hearing and the sounds that were being created. At one point in the evening, uh, I was in there with uh, Brandy. Pretty much we're going to be listening for something that we actually heard while we were sitting there. Do you understand what it is that we're trying to do? Oh, yeah, a little bit. It uh, sounds um, a bit like a female voice. It does seem to be this female voice in response. But by female, there is no legend connected. Well, we know there that the... female. Exactly. We know that the white lady travels the entire place. So we have more for you. What I'm going to show you now, Hannah, is uh, something that we captured. In this particular case, it was this room right here uh, in the summer house, hoping to capture a glimpse of this lady with the red dress that shows up at parties and such. As you can see here, this is the room that we're seated in now. Uh, oh, that is that is back door. room down okay, there. Yeah. Yep. And what I want you to focus on is right over yeah. here, OK? Well, you mean that white line? I want to play it for you again so you get a better look okay. at it. OK. Kind of goes by kind of quick. Now, what we're seeing here is a light appearing yeah. where nobody else is. We know it's yeah. not a bug. We know it's not a camera glitch. But what is it? It's hard to say. It does seem to be paranormal. It's beyond what is normal. But is that enough to connect it to spirit activity? Not yet. 
Um, and that's kind of the way this case went. You heard some of the audio. There right. seemed to be some things going on. But certainly, given the evidence or kind of lack thereof, it's not enough for us to say that any particular location here is haunted. Well, we just don't know. We can guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, coming here. Oh, thank you. Shall we head out? Here we go. Personally, I think at the present time, the ghosts just left us. But it's definitely good uh, to have GHI here to prove that uh, castle is not haunted. You know, we have to draw a line between something that's strange and something that could have a, a spirit activity in nature. Yeah. Um, an EVP that is in response to a question is a lot different than a disembodied voice that we just can't figure out where it's coming from. Yeah, exactly. In our case, just not enough evidence to say that this place is haunted. That being said, we got to work towards getting back to the hotel, getting the rest of the team, and keeping it moving. That's it, brother. Rock and roll. Brandy is going to let us know exactly what we're in for. OK, well, we headed to Rothland Island, which is actually about six miles off the coast of northeastern Northern Ireland. And we're going to be investigating the Rothland Manor House. Now, the island has a deep-seated history, and a lot of it is really dark and unfortunate. Uh, it was actually the site of the first Viking raid in the 700s. In the 1500s and 1600s, there were massacres where hundreds of people died. Just completely tragic. Something else I want to mention, they have a water taxi service. We are actually going to be driving the vehicles up onto the taxi and taxiing six miles out to this island. Oh. It's fantastic to be able to have the team up here on the north coast because this is where I'm from. All right, Barry, I assume this is it coming up ahead, huh? Yeah, we're doing right. it. Well, let's ride off. All right. Cool. Hi, how are Hi. you? Hi, how are you? Rob. Thanks, Anya. Hey, Justin. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Barry. Nice to meet you as well. Welcome to the Manor House here on Rathlin. If GHI finds evidence of ghosts here, I think that might reaffirm some of my beliefs. It'd be great that I'd actually know that there were ghosts in the house. You know, people already tell me that I'm living with ghosts, so I wouldn't mind, you know, knowing who I'm sharing the house with. Can you tell us also about the Manor House itself? Yeah, the Manor House originally would have been built in 1760. It was for the landlords of the island. At that time, the English government would have taken all the land away from the Irish, and they would have uh, then dispersed it amongst people. And they gave it to the Gage family here, and they built this house. There are stories passed down for generations about this place being haunted. You know, exorcisms, paranormal activity, stories of hauntings, etc. If you could take us around and kind of show us where the hot spots are. Yeah, I'd be glad to. All right, we'll follow you. Thanks. We're in the dining room now. That used to be the daycare for the house. There was a woman that was living in the house, and uh, she was in this room. I could see coming to the back door of the house the shape or gray shadow of somebody approaching that door. When I looked again, there was nobody at the back door. I don't know what that was. This is bedroom one. And I had a couple years ago a guest that stayed here came downstairs and told me that she had seen a dark figure in the room, a figure of a woman. She just saw it, and it went away. This is room six, where the exorcism took place. Through the years, there had been claims of things flying off shelves, moving around the rooms, doors slamming, uh, so much so that the Gage family actually had an exorcism done on the house. So the priest went through the house, trying to get the spirit, and eventually led him to this room. Then he uh, pushed it out the window. Did all the poltergeist activity stop after that? Yeah, as the story goes, it stopped after that. When did it start, like, coming back again? Probably 30, 40 years ago from some of the island stories. That that's when you start hearing the children or seeing the men. In the morning, we had arrived, opened up to go to work, and it sounded for all the world like a person walking across the room upstairs. So I went upstairs, but I could see nothing, and I couldn't find any windows opened, and it sounded for all the world like a person walking across the room. We get to investigate the most haunted part of a haunted island, the manor house. Um, most of it is full apparitions, and quite a few of them, and I think that we have a real chance of catching something incredible. Okay, how do we do? We have a camera at the top of the stairs looking down where the reports of the child was seen holding the candle. Camera number two is in the dining area where the child has been seen. Now, on camera number three, 
in the lower hallway. Our aim with this camera is to see shadow. All right, first things first, let's get the lights out. EVP session, Dustin Barry in room six. Barry and I went over to room six, uh, which is a room where the exorcism was held. The exorcism was only to last 99 years. Have you returned? Dustin and I were running full spectrum in room six, along with the 360 mic and the mini TV camera. Did you return to an empty house and bring back more? Several times I've looked across to the corner of that room because I could have swore I've seen something move twice. What is your name? What are you up to? Calling the landlord. Barry had the idea that perhaps uh, the entity was a uh, landlord here, and so he decided we're going to set up some trigger objects and put some of them coin down on the floor and uh, try to entice that spirit to come forward. Four gold coins, one silver. Is that what it's all about? Money, wealth, there's your money. Come out and take it. In death, do you not have enough coins? And just after hearing me with down coins. It did sound like the coins themselves moved. There, there he goes. Straight ahead of me there. Can you make some sort of noise in the room for me? Ashley and I were investigating room one. It sounded like a, like a breath. When I had the headphones on, I believe I heard a breath in my ear, some kind of a, like a, a low sigh. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just speak to us. Just whisper right next to Ashley. Just tell her your name. Whoa, what the hell? I noticed that as I'm trying to focus on Ashley, the camera is refusing to autofocus. It looks like a whiteout, like some kind of mist has actually moved in front of the camera between myself and Ashley. Why is this especially strange? It's because this is the time that we are asking something to approach her and whisper in her ear. Um, so I definitely want to see exactly what's on that tape. EVP session. Ashley and Rob in room one, end. Okay, about that time, let's get them broken down and put away. The investigation tonight at the manor house went really well. Uh, there's something strange, though. Normally, by the end of the night, either you kind of came up with alternatives for everything or you had some strange occurrences. This one, we got both. So I'm really excited to see if we picked up any evidence of the paranormal. We're about to go into the analysis for the manor house on Rathlin Island. But we have a mixture of equipment that we want to keep our attention on, which covers the visual and the audio, and hopefully give the client some, uh, some answers. Hey, guys. I think I found something interesting on Mini TV. This is Ashley and Rob in room one. And Rob's talking about he thinks he sees a mist. What do you think? Is there anything we can do to help you? Whoa, what the hell? It is very, very difficult for us as investigators to understand what's going on in such a small screen, only to bring it to analysis where we see it bigger. And I can understand the predicament that Rob's in and trying to figure out what was going on in that moment. Can you play it again for me? Hmm. Yes, yeah, see here, when Ashley moves her head, you get a lens flare from one of the DVR cameras, which I think is the culprit of why the camera's having issues focusing. See how Rob moves the camera to the door and it comes back into focus? 
Mm -hmm. I think it is the automatic focus on the camera, but certainly by seeing it on the big screen, we're able to understand a solution to it. Hey guys, I think I got something here, uh, Rob and I in room one. I was wearing the amplifying headphones and as I was listening, I was asking questions and I thought I heard a sound of a woman and I think it picked it up. Yeah, I hear that. Sonia, how are you? I'm good. Well, nice to see you guys again. All right. We came in. You told us where a lot of the activity had been reported over the past several hundred years. One of the stories that you told us was the woman being in the dining room and seeing someone out in the hallway at the door just adjacent to the dining area. We decided to do an experiment. So what we did is Rob is right outside that door. I'm in the dining room. I see him. I walk up to the door. I open that door and go across the hallway. There's the other door. Push it open and outside. Nobody's there. Someone looks out the window, they see someone, they go running over. By the time they get out there, there's no one there. This place is rumored to be haunted, so they say, that's amazing, could have been a ghost. Do you think you wouldn't have heard them walking away, though? Nope. Yes, Did you hear anything? Or... No, I didn't hear anything no, either. Long gone by the time anyone gets out there. There were several points throughout the night where people were hearing uh, what sounded like a woman's voice. When we analyzed it, we were able to determine the sound came from a natural source, most likely a, a bird. And during our investigation, there were some personal experiences that uh, people on the team did have. In room number six, the room that you told us where they had the exorcism at one time, yeah. Barry and I were trying to get any kind of response. Barry put the coins down in the middle of the room, and at one point, we actually heard the coins as if somebody was moving them. But we play it back on the tape, and it's so faint that it's like, you know, we can't bring this to you and say, oh, listen to this, this is coins moving. But at the same time we're sitting there, Barry sees a black figure move from that area to the left corner of the room, you know, where the bathroom is in between the closet. Yeah. So this also goes into a personal experience, and I think it adds to some of the stories of, of room six and of the manor itself. So did you not have any recording set to show the figure that you guys saw? No, unfortunately, we didn't, uh, we weren't able to capture the, uh, the figure itself. Despite the personal experiences, we're not able to come to a conclusion that the manor house is haunted. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Oh, well, it's all right. Uh, you know, the islanders, they would say that the place probably still is, but just the ghosts aren't coming out for you guys. <laughs> really want to thank you so much for having us out. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much for coming. All right. All right. Shall we head out? All right, all right. thank you. DHI experienced things here that can't be documented scientifically, but they felt things and will maybe add now to the stories that are here in the manor house. So guys, how'd it go? It's always easy when a place is definitively not haunted or definitively haunted. Right. This one, we had some experiences, we had some stories, so I guess the best we can do is kind of add to those stories. Mm -hmm. Let's get ready for that big boat ride back across. How did you like my side of the world? You can send us back here any 